The Apostle Paul writes a letter to the church in Rome. And it's a, it's a pretty theologically dense letter. Um, theologians for uh, a long time have commented on it and talked about it. It's definitely a, um, a significant theological letter. And sometimes we get these glimpses of Paul kind of, uh, Paul's extreme honesty about uh, the way he views certain things theologically. And um, Romans 7, I think, is one of those. And uh, I'm going to start reading at 15 uh, through the end of chapter 7 uh, of Paul's letter to the Roman church. He writes this. It's, it's just wonderful. I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want. But I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do not want, and I do not, excuse me, now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at law with the war or at war with the law of my mind making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. With all the denseness of this uh, Romans letter, I always come to this passage and I always want to read it psychologically. Like I want to like read it as if this is like we are getting this intimate picture into the psychology of Paul. But then there is always this kind of universal experience that I read in this that doesn't allow me to totally sit there in some kind of psychological read of what Paul is doing, but rather it becomes, my goodness, this is literally what we all experience. We experience this. We experience sometimes a kind of war within ourselves. We experience a kind of falling uh, when we don't want to fall. We experience a kind of reactive mode where we don't want, we do the very thing we do not want to do. And we don't do the very thing that we want to do. And like there's this 
kind of war. Paul talks about it as a kind of war within himself between what he wants to do and, and that is not truly him, but, but it is sin dwelling within him or sin in him that makes him do the thing that he doesn't want to do. And he does the very thing that he hates, he says. There are several just wonderful, wonderful lines where he just names kind of in a wonderful way, I think, our experience oftentimes, where we know what is right, or at least we have an idea, and yet we don't do it. And the very thing that we want to do, we end up not doing. You can see this in, in, in our mistakes, uh, just from, from being children all the way, especially into adulthood. And he literally says that the struggle is within him. And then at the end of this whole thing where he just names this kind of struggle that we all face, I believe, he asks this wonderful little question. He says, wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? It's just a wonderful cry. It's a wonderful cry of, I can't do it. I cannot do what is right. I do these bad things. I do what I don't want to do. And the things that I want to do, I don't do. And I just, I feel like I am chained to this body of death. That who is going to rescue me? Who is going to break the chains from this kind of, struggle and he answers it on some level thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord it's wonderful it's as if he's saying I am totally against myself yet God and Jesus Christ is totally for me This is a hard concept, I think, to get sometimes. Paul does not say in this scripture that God fixes everything, that God even transforms us in some way to make it to where we don't do certain things. And I know there's some theological argument around that. But Paul says, I am wretched. And I need someone to rescue me. Thanks be to God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. As if to say, I am against myself. All the time. But God is always for me. Always for you. Always for us. That we may be against each other on a lot of different ways. And there may be war that rages everywhere. And yet, God is always for us. Always rescuing. Always extending mercy and forgiveness and love. It's really a fascinating passage. Where Paul says he's at war, and yet he says, thanks be to God. So maybe next time you're against yourself, or at war with yourself, or fall flat on your face, we can remember this passage, that though we may be wretched at times, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord that God is always, always for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.